has reached around 50,000 learners across South Africa, targeting disadvantaged schools without computer labs. In April 2022, he received the Distinguished Service in ICT Award from the Institute of IT Professionals, South Africa. The project has received various other local, national, and global accolades. Professor Jean Reiling, on to you. Yes, thanks, Jackson. Thanks for um, being part of this event. I'm talking from my hotel room in Pretoria, where we're training teachers tomorrow morning. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to sharing this with hopefully students in our department and uh, the IT uh, uh, department from next year, hopefully. So if you could just give me a second or two, I'll just start sharing my screen quickly. Okay, so we've got a problem. Uh, the host has not given us ability to share our screen. Uh, so Amanda, if you could maybe sort that out quickly for us. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not available to, I can't share my screen. Okay, it's done. Thank you. That was quick. Um, okay, I trust you can all see my uh, my screen. So I'm I'm talking on behalf of the Department of Computing Sciences, and I'm going to try and just give you an overview of some of the careers in in our discipline, and then something on on the qualifications that we offer, as well as um, the, the advantages of, of being in a career uh, linked to our discipline. I always start with a blank screen because we find that uh, learners from schools often do not uh, really know about the careers in our discipline. Um, this, uh, careers that are much more common and not um, well known would be accountant or engineer or lawyer or medical doctor. But in computing sciences and, and IT, there's estimated a few hundred different careers. So it is impossible tonight for me to cover all of them, but I'm just gonna try and cover, let's say some of the highlights, some of the, the better known ones, but I'm not saying this is exclusive. So let's say you have a company that is in, in, in software and you want to produce a service to your client. And you get a phone call uh, from a hospital somewhere in a rural area that says to you, but we want to computerize uh, what we do in this hospital. We want to go into the 21st century and the fourth industrial revolution, come and help us. So what you would typically do is you would send a business analyst, and there are different names for them, but a business analyst, probably the, the best known title to this hospital. And the task of the business analyst would be to go and investigate the processes, the manual processes that happen in this hospital or any other company, and then try and see which of these processes can be automated. I must admit that I'm oversimplifying things, but I'm doing my best. So the business analyst comes back to your company and then talks to the systems analyst. Now the systems analyst has the bigger picture of how to address this problem using computers, if I had to use the general term computers. Uh, and obviously uh, it's not just writing programs. It will be about uh, networks and network cables. It will be about uh, internet, Wi-Fi. Uh, it will be about training the staff, uh, user interface, what will work, what kind of staff are you interacting with? So the system analysis analyst will put together this, this big project and identify all the different components that are involved in solving the problem. They'll also have a project manager, and I always say to school kids, similar to the rugby or the netball captain, there's a, a guy that would, or lady that will be in lead of the project. This person will have a, a team working on the project, and this could be for a month, could be for a year, and I've, I've known projects that run for decades. So the project manager is in charge of the team. You will definitely have your software developers, uh, sometimes called programmers or coders, and probably the best known career in our discipline, but clearly not the only uh, career. So the software developers will be the people that write the programs. And then if I want to complete the cycle, you will have your quality testers. These are people that would investigate the, the code that's been written, 
look at the interface, look how users would respond to it, trying to find bugs, try to improve the interactivity of, of this uh, system that's being developed. So in short, that is a very simplified version of, of a project team that will work towards computerizing a hospital somewhere in the rural areas uh, systems. Uh, often people refer to the, not often, I've heard them to refer to this as a two pizza team, uh, tongue in the cheek. They say sometimes these teams have to work overnight and late at night, and then they would order two pizzas. But we, we often think when we think computing sciences, we, we think BSc, and I, and I need to emphasize that we have far too few people uh, registering for the BCom computer science and information systems qualification. Uh, this, we've seen a huge upswell in BSc registrations and actually a drop in BCom. Uh, and, and I think this is a very dangerous trend. So everyone listening out there that enjoys the, the commerce kind of subjects, uh, we need you in our discipline. So what are typical BCom degrees? Definitely the business analyst, especially if you're writing software for a, a commercial company, you need the business analyst, the person that has some commercial background, not just coding and scientific background. You'll have the chartered accountant. Um, uh, in our university, we offer the degree of computing uh, accounting science, where you major and program uh, in computer science, as well as in, in accounting. So the chartered accountant is a well sought after career. And it's becoming more and more important that your accountants also have a software background. Your computer auditor, it simply, it says what it does. The computer auditor is the person that's in charge of auditing companies, auditing their own companies. So if you want to simplify it very basically, for example, finding fraud in your company, the computer auditor will, will be in charge of that. And then your ERP consultant, again, I'm just mentioning four careers, and often these consultants are some of the best paid people in the industry. Some of you might have heard of SAP, but that's not the only ERP system that you would find. And again, I want to emphasize the importance of computer science and accounting, because we, we, we worried about the drop in, in uh, registrations for the BCom degree. This is from one of our um, graduates that now stays in, in, in Perth. And he says, I'm a finance, finance director at a manufacturing company in Perth, Australia. As an outlet for my secret passion for data, I'm working up a set of quick view apps that allow me some flexibility, seeing what is going on in our system. So, so Gubbs is clearly, Brad is clearly combining his background of accounting and computer science uh, for his company. And then one of the huge buzzwords in industry today. And okay, as I said, uh, the, the career of data science is, is a, is a very critical career these days with all the sensors and data collecting methods that companies have. Data is becoming the gold for many companies and the, the careers of analyzing that data and giving important information to managers is broadly dis discussed as data science. And uh, it has a commerce angle as well as a science angle. So there's very many different ways in which you can be a contributor as a data scientist. And it's very much linked to our discipline. Then obviously entrepreneurship. Uh, we all know Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg. Um, and we, our departments have all produced entrepreneurs. Uh, this is just one of them. Um, James Pierce, SMS Portal might be a company that you've heard of. It's from our company, but there are many other entrepreneurs from the computing uh, discipline. So if you have an entrepreneurial spirit becoming joining this fraternity would be very useful for you. So which computer degree do you choose? Uh, what I've done is I'm just looking at, at the degrees. Uh, Prof. Van Gerenen will probably look more to, on the diplomas. So from our department, we have a BSc computer science, which will combine with subjects like physics and maths and statistics, applied mathematics. Then you have a BCom computer science and information systems degree. And there you'll be doing steps in addition to computers, accounting, business management, um, economics. We have a BCom information systems degree. 
in a sense, very similar to the BCom computer science, but with the one main difference that the, let's call it the conventional programming languages that, that you think of when you think computing, uh, that conventional programming you'll only be doing in first year. After that, you will be focusing more on the information systems aspects. I've mentioned the BCom accounting sciences degree, where you major with computer science and accounting. And then the BIT degree, uh, which is from Prof. Daryl van Greren's um, entity, is a single discipline degree where you, where the, the other degrees above are multidiscipline, so you're doing other subjects, but the BIT degree is a single discipline, so you will not be doing other subjects from other departments. So what do you do, need to do to study a degree in computing? That would be now a degree in a multidiscipline degree in our department, obviously a bachelor pass, and for automatic acceptance, uh, maths 60% for the BCom degrees and 65% for BSc. And your application score, that's adding up all seven of your subjects, 390 for the BCom degrees and 410 for the BSc. Uh, actually, the BCom accounting science will have the same uh, prerequisites as the uh, BSc degree. Very important to note, there's no need to have IT or CAT at school to study a degree in computing. Also important to note, because we are a hybrid department, um, when you're studying either, either a BSc or a BCom degree, the computer modules that you do in our department will be 80 to 90% the same. So the difference between the degrees is mainly the other subjects that you do. So BSc will be physics, applied math, statistics, maths. A BCom will be accounting, economics, business management. So that, those are the two, those are the deciding factors whether you want to do a BC or a BCom, where the 90, 80 to 90% of the computer modules are the same. How far should I study? Very important question. And this is, we tell our first years in the first week, you come to study and your plan is to do an honors, the fourth year after your first three year, three degree, first year, first undergrad degree, which takes three years. The honors is the fourth year. And I always say the only two reasons that you don't do an honors is you don't have the money or your marks aren't good enough in third year. There's no other reasons for not doing an honors. A master's becomes a personal choice, but we're finding more and more companies in South Africa and abroad that are now looking for, learn for graduates who have a master's degree. And then the PhD is obviously the, the ultimate and that would be a personal choice. With which degree will I earn the biggest salary? And firstly, I'm going to say that's the wrong question. And secondly, because the skill is so sought after, the degree you do does not have an impact on your salary. That's from my perspective. So may the, this, may, this is not a question you should be asking. You should be asking which degree fits my interest most and which degree will lead to the career that I would be interested in most but the salaries are actually are probably the more or less the same for the different degrees. Will I have a job? And I'm just gonna give you some stats on this. Software development um, is commonly, generally known as one of the scarcest skills in South Africa. And it's been this for five, six, seven years. This screen is from 2017 and this screen in career junction is probably 22 is still the same. So you know, the information technology or computing discipline uh, has some of the most job opportunities in our country at this stage. Uh, I'm not going to mention the company, but a company in, in Kiberga often tells me that they can employ 150 new software developers tomorrow morning if we can just give them enough. So there's a desperate shortage in South Africa and, and most of the world. But in terms of South Africa, uh, our absolute desperate shortage of, of software developers or people with computing qualifications. This is made worse by COVID. Uh, and, and I think I don't need to expand on this. COVID has forced the world to go much more online. And whenever you go online and into the space, more software is needed. So most companies report that they've seen a spike in the need of software developers, but that spike became a trend. It hasn't dropped. 
So there's even more people needed now in this discipline than before COVID. And just, just I just wanted to show you a visual. If you have a, if you don't have a scarce skill and you apply for the job, on the left hand side is what the boss's desk would like would like look like with all the applications. People could literally get a few hundred applications. Uh, Amanda, if you could just mute all the mics, maybe. Um, a few hundred applications for one job. But if you have a scarce skill, and, and the skills in our discipline are scarce, jobs might be advertised and no one might apply. Or you could be the only one that applies. That's the difference between a scarce skill and not having a scarce skill. I want to close up with, with this on why are our graduates, uh, maybe I can just ask that everyone make sure their mics are muted. Uh, Amanda's host, I think you can also mute all mics. Can see that I can do it. Okay. So why are our people, our graduates, very happy in their jobs? And I think this this quote kind of defines it. I am a master of my own destiny, and I can make my life anything that I wish it to be. Uh, it's probably one of the most flexible careers that you can go in because there's just so many options. You could work anywhere on the globe. Uh, we have graduate, graduates literally on six continents. The only one, obviously, is Antarctica. But with the, the skills that you get in this discipline, you can be employed anywhere in the world. Intelligent, energetic people. It's an exciting environment. I'm just giving you some of the well-known companies where our graduates are working. But I also need to say that the vast majority don't work at well-known companies. They often work at companies that produce products that you know, but you don't know the company. But wherever you work, you will work with intelligent, energetic people. And this is what graduates have told us. This is one of the, the, the most powerful things of, of our discipline is that you, you are creating, uh, writing programs and using programs and, and implementing systems. You are a creator. You're not just applying rules. Uh, and, uh, and many people enjoy this, this, this feeling sense of creating something new. In a company, writing a program, computerizing, automating its creation. And this is the last slide, and, and this is one of the quotes that I've received from a graduate that I will never forget. He said to me, Prof, when I go into, I can't remember which was pick and pay, let's say pick and pay, and I pay, there's a slip that comes out. And then I say to myself, I wrote that code. He works at a company that, produ that produces the software for the financial systems in South Africa. And wherever you go, if you're a software developer, you will be saying, I wrote that code. And this is one of the most satisfying feelings that people in our discipline have. I'm going to close off with this, and that's just our website, cs.mandela.ac.za. And I'll be ready for questions uh, after this. Um, thank you very much. I'll stop sharing now and hand over to the MC. Thank you very much. I'll stop sharing.